you know, we, we represent veterans. Is that limited to just conservative our, requests? Our, we started as a conservative group, but it, we have veterans from all across the political spectrum. I just spoke last week at the, uh, the Green Party um, state platform in Idaho. I was one of their keynote speakers there, and that's as far from the right as you can get, I think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's open to anybody that shares the, this foreign policy belief. Dan, Dan the man. Dan the man. That was my campaign slogan when I uh, ran for student body president in seventh grade. <laughs> Let me reintroduce myself. Yep. I'm Ty. I have a hobby where I talk to people about what they believe or anything they want to talk about. Uh, did you have anything on your mind? Or Yeah, um, we're here at CPAC, obviously. Uh, we are at CPAC. CPAC. I guess something must mean a lot to you. It does. Yep. Why don't we talk about that? We are a veterans organization called BringOurTroopsHome.us. Nice. And uh, we are right-leaning conservative veterans. Um, who have decided now that we have a president in the White House that is speaking our language and saying the things that we've held internally for so long that we've decided to come out publicly finally as a group of right-leaning veterans and say enough is enough. It's time to end the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. So I have a really big military family. Right. I found that it's hard to get veterans, let me know if this is right, to coalesce and be willing to speak up Absolutely. because they tend to grumble right. a lot and, and talk it. among themselves yep. and internalize. But as far as standing out and expressing themselves as like a unified group, Correct. that's very, very hard to do. We're trained to be stoic. We're trained to be disciplined. We're trained to follow orders. We're exactly. not trained to speak out. And uh, after I served in Afghanistan in 05, 06, and 07, I got hurt and I got out and I went underground. Mm -hmm. Went underground. And then my, my senator, Jim Risch, um, from Idaho, became the chairman of the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations back in January of last year. And I thought, I'm going to reach out to old Jim Risch, who was my governor at one time, and ask him if he'll use his chairmanship to find a way to support President Trump and help end the wars. I mean, he's the second most powerful foreign policy person in the United States. And I asked him, and in public, he said, Dan, I'm with you. I think we should be done nation building. And then he went back to Washington three times the next 30 day, or 90 days and voted to extend the war over and over and over again. So that's when I called my buddies up and I said, hey, we need to do something. And we created this organization. And veterans from all across the political spectrum are now jumping on board. All right, so you said that in like two sentences. Like, I called my buddies up and we all showed up. Was it for other people who are like, oh man, this guy started something, I need to start something too, but we're nowhere near where you're located. Sure. Or, I, I want to be able to join a, generate a community that can support your your goals as well. Like, could you talk about like some of the difficulties that came about getting absolutely. people to be like, it's not just a phone call. I right. really need your help here. Yep, yeah? absolutely. It was you have to find people that are like-minded. And generally in the military, all of us can connect on something. Usually it's our military experience. Mm -hmm. So we may not agree on immigration or taxes or Medicare for all or any of those things like that. Sure. But we all agree on one thing that we love the military and we love our country. And so as we started talking about it and actually opening up, and it's hard for military guys to open up and share their feelings and beliefs, we all decided the same thing, that we didn't feel like we had a mission or a purpose in Afghanistan. And after 19 years, every general that comes in and leads that war has a different uh, mission, yeah. but never a strategy. And so we've been there for 19 years without a strategy or a purpose. And uh, so finally we said, you know what, let's do this. And it took four of us to get together, and we started a panel, and we invited people to meet us at the library. And uh, the first time, the, the room filled to capacity. And we just held a panel and discussed the war. And uh, after that, our numbers grew. And then nice. after 10 months, we took a group of 100 veterans from around the country, all over the United States, and lawmakers from all over the country, and went to Washington, D.C. and held a rally. And uh, we, we talked about ending the war, and we went and met with our congressional delegations and felt like we got lip service, nothing more than just a platitude, thanks for your service, I hear you, we're doing what we can, we now go back home. And so now we're in all 50 states. We've got members, we've got 25,000 nice. plus members. Nice. And we're, we're not even, a, well, we're 13 months old. And uh, we've written legislation that is proposed in nine states right now, where we're basically saying, if you want the National Guards from the states to go to war, Congress first has to declare war. And that's what's been missing from our foreign policy for so long, is we don't ask Congress to declare war anymore. We let the president decide that, and that's why you have no oversight, because the president's gone in four years, or eight years. That's why this war's gone and on. And you never know who might just show up and be like, I don't want to touch that, that was the last president. They war. all pass it on to the next one. Yep, yep, exactly. That's why we're in this war. And we've got now Marines, oh, young man. Marines in training that are, weren't even born when it started. You know, so that's that's who we are, bring our troops home. That puts it in a US. really big picture. That's a really big picture. So you have basically people passing the buck. Yep. People whose lives are now accountable Correct. for the fact that no one's willing to take responsibility. And all you're asking for is 
please be culpable of what's, what's going on when we're deploying. Absolutely. There's a reason why the Constitution was written the way it was, okay. where the power to declare war was given to the Congress, because they're the closest to the people, right? So if you vote for a war in Congress, you have to come home and look your constituents in the face. Sure. The executive doesn't. Okay. Now I think we have a guy in the White House right now that wants to end the wars, but what about the next guy? or the previous guy, or you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So if I can't hold my guy accountable now, I can never hold another party's candidate accountable in the future. So you're trying to hold Trump accountable right now to end the war, I'm or here whoever's the next president. Yeah, I'm here more to support, because he speaks like he wants to end the war, okay. and he's done a good job of doing it. Um, but Congress and, and the White House right now are so tribal. They hate each other, right? They can't get along. Um, we want Congress to reclaim their authority under the Constitution, and if it's so important that, the, that you want the military to go fight and die, before you ask the military to put their boots on the ground, we ask Congress to put their name on the line. I'm going to ask a question. Yeah, please do. Let me know if it's fair. If it's not okay. fair, just say, hey, that's not fair. Would you say this is more of like a one issue party or a one issue group that you have right now? We, we are, well, yes, one issue, but we are a veteran service organization. So we work with other groups like the Gold Star Mothers, Blue Star Mothers, um, Concerned Veterans for America. We work with other groups, but our issue is a proper foreign policy. Uh, in the proper use of the military following the Constitution. And then also congressional declaration for war, if, you, if you're going to send that out. Yep. If we were able to get that fixed, say tomorrow, let's say, let's make it more reasonable. Like right. a month, they hear you, it's done, Congress fixed it, what's next? What's next for bringourtroopshome.us? Yeah. Uh, I think we, we continue on as an organization uh, encouraging and lobbying Congress to do the right thing when it comes to foreign policy. Yeah. And not using the military as the easy button. If you have a problem, don't push the easy button, use diplomacy first. Hopefully I'm not overstepping my bounds, but you have an excellent group of veterans who are willing to speak up as like a big block of people. Right. That's a great resource for congressmen or senators that want to reach out and get the vibe right. or the impression of new laws, new policies that they want to issue, policies that they want to remove, and say like, is this fair? What's the veterans who have served this country saying right now? Sure. Get someone on the phone, talk to. Yeah, talk it's to great. Yeah, we we actually uh, we 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 have communication with the White House where we've told them we're available to provide any number of veterans from any background, any spectrum, any era, for any policy questions, any events, anything that they need, and uh, we're starting to develop that relationship where, you know, we we represent veterans. Is that limited to just conservative? Our, our, we started as a conservative group, but it, we have veterans from all across the political spectrum. I just spoke last week at the uh, the Green Party. Um, state platform in Idaho. I was one of their keynote speakers there, and that's as far from the right as you can get, I think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's open to anybody that shares the, this foreign policy belief. Okay. And like I said, the Democrats and Republicans can't agree on healthcare, mm. they can't agree on taxes, the border, anything. It sounds like there's a mission that needs to be done. Right. And We're trying to bring them together on this one issue. Just get them on this one issue, get that's that right. done. Uh, what do you have to do to be able to join? Uh, go to bringourtroopshome.us and then the contact now uh, button. Belief. You fill out okay. a little form and, and like that'll said, actually Democrats take you to a place where you can sign a petition saying that you agree taxes, uh, that these wars have gone on for too anything. long. And then it we'll, sounds like there's a mission we will send you correspondence and via email. We don't blast your email. About once a month you'll get a newsletter from us. Okay. And we're looking for local chapters in every state to, to build their numbers and uh, become a, a bigger group. So you don't necessarily have to serve to join? Nope, absolutely not. Cool. Do you have a card or I information? Do. So I've got, there's a, just a pass along card, then I've got my business card here. Somewhere, maybe. Bring our troops home. Yep. Dot org. Or bring our troops home. Dot US. Dot US. Dot yep. US. Yep. Very political. Right, right. Very political. <laughs> Smartly done. Marketing yeah. major. Just kidding. <laughs> Dan, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate your time. I really appreciate it. You bet. That was awesome. I hope you had a good time. Yeah. I did. I had a great time. I really, I really, I'm, I really appreciate this group. I think you guys are doing a great job. Yeah. You bet. Thanks, I. So big. 13 months and you're this big already. Keep it up, man. Thank you. Keep it up. Oh, you missed.